Good evening, Chosen Ones. How we doing? It's the end of Sunday, and I was feeling like God wanted me to speak a little bit more um, from Ezekiel tonight. Uh, we're going to start off with chapter 9. It is Ezekiel chapter 9. And he proceeded to call out in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Have those giving their attention to the city come near, each one with his weapon in his hand for bringing ruin? And look, there were six men coming from the direction of the upper gate that faces to the north, each one with his weapon for smashing in his hand, and there was one man in among them clothed with linen, with a secretary I'm sorry, with a secretary's inkhorn at his hips. And they proceeded to come in and stand beside the copper altar. Verse three And as regards the glory of the God of Israel, it was taken up from over the cherubs, over which it happened to be to the threshold of the house. And he began calling out to the man that was clothed with the linen, at whose hips there was the secretary's inkhorn. Inkhorn. A small portable container for ink. That's fascinating. Okay. How to pronounce cherub. Cherub, right? Isn't that how you say it? I think I was close. Cherub. Cherub. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. And as regards to the glory of the God of Israel, it was taken from over the cherubs over which it happened to be the threshold of the house, and he began calling out to the man that was clothed with the linen, at whose hips there was the secretary's inkhorn. And Jehovah went on to say to him, Pass through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and you must put a mark on the foreheads of the men that are sighing and groaning over all the detestable things that are being done in the midst of it. Verse 5. And to these others he said in my ears, Pass through the city after him and strike. Let not your eye feel sorry and do not feel any compassion. Verse 6. Old man, young man, and virgin, and little child and woman, you should kill off to a ruin nation. To a ruin nation. Ruin nation. Probably just means to ruin. The action or fact of ruining someone or something of being ruined. But to, but to any man upon whom there is the mark, do not go near. And from my sanctuary, you should start. So they started with the old men that were before the house. Verse 7, and he said further to them, defile the house and fill the courtyards with the slain ones. Go forth. Mm-hmm. Defile means to solely mar or spoil. So kind of like ruin the house and fill the courtyards with the slain ones. I'm trying to be a student of the Bible, so I'm looking up every single word I do not know, or that I think I could know better. Oh, it's another way to say, it's an archaic way of saying to kill in a violent way. Um... Greatly impress or amuse is another informal version of that. what that word means. Okay. And he said further to them, defile the house and fill the courtyards with the slain ones. Go forth. And they went forth and struck in the city. Verse 8. And it came about that while they were striking and I was left remaining, I proceeded to fall upon my face and cry out and say, Alas, O sovereign Lord, Jehovah, are you bringing to ruin all the remaining ones of Israel while you are pouring out your rage upon Jerusalem? So he said to me, verse 9, The error of the house of Israel and Judah is very, very great, and the, glan- and, excuse me, and the land is filled with bloodshed, and the city is full of crookedness. For they have said, Jehovah has left the land, and Jehovah is not seen. Verse 10, And as for me also, my eye will not feel sorry, neither shall I show compassion. Their way I shall certainly bring upon their own head. And look, the man clothed with the linen at whose hips there was the inkhorn, was bringing back word, saying, I have done just as you have commanded me. So, I, I, um, 
I felt drawn to this verse because it shows the power of God's wrath. And I do believe that we are in the, the end days of the world. And um, I'm like shivering and hot at the same time. I still have a little bit of chills. It is truly miserable. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, and then I also wanted to bring about the, um, like, uh, kind of cherry pick some scriptures about... Is the lighting really this bad? What is going on? Goodness. Okay. That's a little better. Um, wanted to talk about instinct and intuition. Um, and look into certain Bible verses that are about that, specifically. Exodus 21, 33-34. As creator, God knows that the intelligence level of these beasts is not so high that they can avoid pitfalls beyond what he has programmed into their instinct. This law then pressures men to take precautions around animals for their sake. The same principle is true for plants. If fire breaks out and catches in thorns so that stacked grain, standing grain, or the field is consumed, he who kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. I'm pretty sure I know what that word means. It's like a legal term, actually, so... I really should know what that means but i'm just gonna the restoration of something lost or stolen to its proper owner yeah it's like a remedy okay oh don't sneeze come on i thought we were over the sneezing phase um this law then pressures men to take precautions around animals for their sake he who kindles a fire shall surely make restitution exodus 22 6 obviously these laws have economic and criminal implications but the ecological benefits are clear they forestall people from taking a careless approach to the living environment, and their principles apply to all sorts of ecological abuses. Interesting. Ecclesiastes 1, 12, chapter 1, verse 12 through 18. The book's first 11 verses do not provide much in the way of hope for one's life, but Solomon is not yet ready to explain more fully. However, he is looking for some explanations because, unlike an animal, man is created in the likeness of God and has a spirit. A man, therefore, looks for meaning in order to have direction for living his life. Unlike animals, man does not merely exist within the narrow parameters of instinct. Through his, through his life is difficult, though his life is difficult, man has an inner, God-given drive that his life is going somewhere. Solomon will later provide further insight into this drive. The first mention of God appears in verse 13, and Solomon directly states that he gave us the grievous task of living by wisdom. One thing that he clearly counsels us on, and also shows by his personal example, is that God does not want us to run from life's difficulties, but to meet them and confront them head on. Mm -hmm. That's so strong. And do our best to overcome them. The ultimate escape is through suicide, but some attempt to escape through various addictions. Oh, thank you, Jesus, I got over those. And others, simple, and others simply give up and let others take care of them, as some are... Um, now using the government. Verse 15 contains one of those blunt facts of life that all need to deal with. Verse 16 contains one of those blunt facts of life that we all need to deal with without allowing themselves to become cynical, yet also remaining realistic. When Solomon states, what is crooked cannot be made straight, he was referring not to anything material like a piece of steel, but rather to the circumstances and events of communal life. An obvious example is that the past cannot be changed, and injustice might be resolved and an apology given, but many lasting effects remain. Mm. We do not understand very much. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, We now see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. In Romans 8, 28, in the same chapter in which he expounds on the futility of life, and he says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Oh yeah. Now we're on, now we're on a roll. Thus by looking at, at through the eyes of faith, we can know about life to some degree. But at this point in Ecclesiastes, Solomon is warning us that it contains a great deal of inequity, disappointment, and discouragement, evil, apparent injustice, and pain. Nations enter wars without our permission. Governments and their systems are corrupt. Their courts are unfair and businessmen lie and steal. All clearly caused by the minds and hands of men. There is so much of this, he says, it is beyond count. 
God could easily stop these events, but he does not. And this was, was touching to me, too, because it kind of goes back to um, mm, mm, Lazarus uh, the other night when we did uh, devotions and studies about how Lazarus was sick and God knew that he was sick, but he still waited even after he was buried for four days to resurrect him on account of Martha, his sister. Hmm. Sometimes he seems remorseless in his effort to make us think, but even the wisdom of Solomon cannot break through on the basis of human reason. He sets his mind to study and meditate on the resources that he already has on hand to further expand the possibilities of greater understanding. Go ahead and listen here. When he writes in verse 17 that he set his heart to know madness and folly, he means that he will search for answers by exploring the opposites of wisdom, so that he hopes the contrast might reveal a deeper, clearer understanding of wisdom. The Hebrew term translated as madness is somewhat misleading because it is closer in meaning to recklessness, indicating error in thinking. It is not the type of recklessness that would bring bodily injury, but it could mislead his search for factual truths. Mm -hmm. Life may seem monotonous and meaningless, but for those called by God, it need not be. Life now is a tremendous blessing. We must accept the reality, though, that we must live by faith in God's promises. Following his resurrection, Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, 29. Jesus Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Corinthians 1, 24. In his mercy, he has miraculously broken into our lives to prepare us for, our, for his kingdom. We must take up the challenges that he has presented. Cease living our lives running in circles and head straight for the kingdom of God. I hope I wasn't reading too fast. And I hope you guys can understand me with the cough drop in my mouth. But there is so much to go off of with um, kind of looking up verses that have to do with instinct specifically. I'm literally sweating and like, yeah, like goosebumps at the same time. I hate having the chills. It's literally the worst. <sighs> almost over it. Almost, almost back to healthy. Let's see. I wanted to read, oh, this one was so good. Jeremiah 8, 7. Even the stork in the sky knows her seasons, and the turtle dove and the swift and the thrush observe the time of their migration. But my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. So this refers to the natural instinct that animals have when they migrate, right? And um, how that's given to them by God. So we also have an innate instinct given to us by God. We also have to follow the scripture and listen to God's voice in order to um, go straight to his kingdom, as we just read. I got some like ginger lemon tea. I think it's helping. Who knows? Okay. Appreciate your patience with me. Appreciate your patience with me, y'all. And this one's really, really, really good too. Isaiah 1 3. An ox knows its owner, and a donkey its master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. I think this refers to um, how we'll always kind of be a little dumbfounded as, as Jesus Christ followers, um, but in like the best way possible. Like, you know, that saying that God works in mysterious ways. I actually had um, a dream today that it, it like, it made perfect sense after I thought about it for a little bit more. Um, it, it showed me that God has my back 100% of the time, and that he hears all my thoughts, and that he hears all my misery, but it was basically on, um, like, missing a friend, and then I had a dream that that friend texted me, um, I miss you too, and then I was like, whoa, and then, like, I looked right at the clock, like, right as I got up for my nap today, and it was 3.27, and right as I looked, after waking up from that nap, I'm sorry. It changed to 328. So I just know I'm on my purpose um, due to that timing and that dream that I had. Mm -hmm. This is good too. Proverbs 30, 25. The ants are not a strong people, but they prepare their food in the summer. So this refers to um, the instincts that, again, animals have and that you don't necessarily need to have like um, Einstein, IQ, to be like 
in and out of the game and follow your instinct and like not follow any manual not follow any script like you're just going off of like your brilliant genius like um instinct like yes like there is a little bit of that that god gives us but he's referring to how much like stronger our faith with god is and then we also do have a little bit of instinct so if we could just learn from everything else that he also created which is like ants and other animals that follow their migrations like the birds for example there are not a strong people, but they prepare their food in the summer. So maybe for those that are insecure right now um, on some on some um, um, traits or attributes that they have, maybe maybe you're not um, the one pulling the most weight at the gym, but maybe you are um, the most lithe and flexible and can do the splits, and you bring a lot of peace and um, um, malleability to your team, whatever it be. So everyone has strengths and weaknesses, and God loves us for exactly who we are, and he has a plan for all of us. So if we can tap into what that inner instinct is, and we have to love ourselves enough to do it in order to follow your instinct, then God will guide us the rest of the way through scripture and through his, his voice that you hear when you're still. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I also noticed that before this video, I got like, I got a feeling in my stomach of like excitement. I don't know how to, Jesus, goodness gracious. Um, like in my stomach that like something good is about to happen, like something really good. And I was like, I was like, it only happens every so often. I think the last time I got this feeling was maybe five months ago, six months ago. Um, but it's like this like excited feeling in my stomach that it like, it, it's kind of like that same feeling you're like when you're looking at the roller coaster and you're seeing the line above you go ahead and like you're about to go down the roller coaster and you know you're about to have a really fun time like I feel like that um and that's why I think I'm talking so fast and ahead of the video because normally reading scripture that much scripture would put me on like 22 24 minutes but I also talk fast and I'm aware of that um let me know if I talk too fast I can slow down but I just I have this really solid feeling that this week is going to be a really 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 good week and um that something really good is gonna happen so that's awesome um I'm just I'm just trying to like listen and be like okay God what do you what do you want me to say to the world like how can I how can I help you because you're so busy all the time saving the world and and punishing the wicked <laughs> too um so I just gotta be more blessed like um in the position that I am which is like able to share on this platform and I'm proud of myself because this is my second video of the day and I have my other YouTubers to look up to for that because they usually do two videos a day as well. Um, so, we started out with Ezekiel because that was showing the power of wrath. And I think God wanted me to show that because maybe it has something to do with the inkhorn, like how I'm a writer. And then it might inspire other writers out there. And that God may ask us to do things sometimes that might seem um, really hard to fathom. But at the end, the man uh, dressed in linen at whose hips there was the inkhorn, was bringing back words saying, I have done just as you have commanded me. And when we get to heaven, you guys, at the end of this life, at the end of all these multiple, 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 never-ending tests that we go through, we want to hear from God, good job, my faithful, good job, job well done, my faithful and loyal servant. And I'm not exactly 100% correct on that, but you get the gist. We want to be um, commended for our efforts and... Um, you know, God will see even your attempt. If you feel a little funny about praying, it's okay. It's it's totally normal. Just just close your eyes and and try it with me, like, or or try it alone. And um, before you go to bed tonight, and just ask God to be your friend first, and allow Him to come into your life. And if it seems overwhelming, that's fine too. That's that's kind of part of it. It is overwhelming to bring this awesome friend into our lives. Um, but He is first and foremost, like your guidance and your salvation and your rock. He is the Almighty, the Omega, and, um, the Almighty, the Omega, and the Alpha. So, we are not ever going to be forsaken. Um, he will give you the power. He will give you the right words to say. Um, lean into what, what, prayer when you're worried. Like Paul said, cast all cares to God. Um, you know, so he, he is there for us to lean into. Um, even though it's intimidating to get, if you're new to Christianity. I also made really good burgers. I ate, I ate one burger. 
and I am very satisfied with the burger I made. I had avocado, I had hot sauce, I had mayonnaise, I had ketchup, I had fresh lettuce. I had like a lot of fresh lettuce. It was great. So you guys, I wanted to give a little bit of that devotion tonight before we go to bed and pray that um, y'all get a very restful night's sleep and that we slay this week like we uh, are meant to as we are followers of Christ and are meant to shine light into this world and leap with joy at the idea of spending eternity with God. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Ah, sounds so nice. So let's go ahead and pray. I appreciate y'all so much. Dear Lord Jesus, and also a tip for anyone that's just getting into prayer and just getting into learning how to um, follow Christ, it's best, it's recommended that you fold your palm, um, hands like this, interlaced, and close your eyes and bow your head down so you don't have any distractions. So let's go ahead and get into it. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this wisdom that you're sharing with us tonight via the Bible verses and for this time and for this platform that we're able to gain on, Lord. And I pray that you are able to... Um, I'm just, I'm just getting like a little happy about, um, how strong and, um, close with you I feel. It's beautiful. And, um, how protected by you I feel, Lord. It's beautiful. Dear Lord Jesus, I, I thank you so much for this time that we're able to gather together and for who this message reaches, Lord. I pray that you, you heal any ailments, um, and that we, I also would like to pray for um, the strength to endure any battles that we're currently going through, Jesus. Please give us the um, patience. Please give us the, the fruits of, of your love, which is like um, patience and joy and kindness, Lord. I pray that you um, give us the malleability and the extra breathing room and the the extra peace of mind that um, we are blessed with already having being followers of, of you God and Lord I pray that anyone that is suffering from loneliness right now God that I pray that you offer two angels on each side of them Lord tonight and make them feel your love Lord please um, bless them with your love and um, I pray that anyone that doesn't know you Jesus please offer the opportunity whether it be uh street preaching or or this message and that you bring them closer to you god because um our relationship with you is so important and um i pray that um we are able to uh have the opportunity to be able to give back as you have given so much to us jesus and i thank you for the opportunity to get closer and closer to you uh throughout the summer. Lord, I know that I was having a really hard time and I thank God for these YouTubers that brought me closer to you. And now I'm able to be the person that is sharing the word of God with uh, the world and anyone that'd like to hear Jesus. I pray for anyone that is going through physical ailments tonight, that they have two of their guardian angels rest their hands on whatever body part that is causing them pain or distress and that you bring them healing, Lord. I pray that we all get a really good night's sleep and seek the answers and follow the instinct that you provided for us so that we can fulfill the purpose in our lives that you planned out for us, that you knew about before we were even born, Jesus. Thank you so much for this opportunity to get closer and closer with you twice a day, every day, Lord. And in your name we pray, amen. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just like, it just like, you know, how it goes. So thanks for your patience with me and... <laughs> Um, it just is beautiful to be touched by the Holy Spirit and feel so close to God after so many years of straying afar from the path. Um, I feel like I'm finally in my purpose and it's just the strongest feeling I've ever had in my life and um, that all the right people are about to come into my life too. So um, thank you, Lord, for everything. And thank you guys for sharing this platform with me. I hope you all get a really, really good night's sleep and um, have lovely, blissful dreams and wake up refreshed. With all that said, stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay chosen. Love y'all. Peace.